everyone. My name is Delana Burns, and I'm with you tonight on Live with Prima. I'm going to be sharing this altered teacup with you. Um, Mother's Day is close. Lots of different things you could actually create one of these for. Uh, it actually is a thrift store find that I repurposed and cycled up. So um, let me get the chat back up so I can kind of see what's going on as long as I can. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, an announcement. Uh, Tuesday, April 26th at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, Jamie Doherty will be with us. She'll be doing a gorgeous bookmark and um, for the uh, Bible journals using Prima's Loom. So that should be a very interesting, fabulous show. So y'all be sure and tune in and catch Jamie uh, Tuesday. Um, and that's the only announcement. That's funny. Our adventure is over right now. So we're getting ready to announce the next art venture. So just had that beautiful art venture last week. So I'm uh, going to move on to my project pretty quickly. Just kind of give you a peek. And um, hey, cat. I'm able to see the chat just one more minute, y'all. And then you know I'm going to go away. I won't ever see it again. So, can you kind of see all these layers of lace and pearls and beauty? Okay, we had a little glitch. Hold on just a minute. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me again? Okay, I don't know what happened, but it looked like it had a little pause, so... Okay, if there's a problem, Carrie or Robbie, will y'all let me know? Because I think it kind of like blinked. Um, anyway, um, I am doing lots of projects for my daughter's wedding. I think as a lot of you know, this is one project that we will use um, as part of a centerpiece collection. So just going to have the two of these there, but I think it's really pretty. These are her wedding colors, and it's just a great project you can do for Mother's Day, a birthday, just a, a sick friend and um, lots of little pieces and trinkets in here and it's really easy peasy to make so um, if you got a really good look at it I want Carrie to tell me how my lighting is she got new lights and I couldn't stand it I had to get new lights too um, I'm kind of jealous like that so I got new lights and um, Robbie might have got new lights too so anyway we'll see on her next show so Moving on, I'll show you. I started off by painting the pieces. And you can see this is like a larger size mug cup. Um, I did a layer. You can kind of see on the inside. This is all going to be covered up. I did a layer of gesso. This cup had like blue flowers all over it. So I did a layer of gesso. And then I did a couple of layers of the Art Alchemy acrylic paint. Um... Good. Thank you, Carrie. Um, she's saying that my lights look good. Yay! Um, feels like daytime in here. Um, the Art Alchemy paints, and I used Vintage Rose. I did a couple of coats to get those blue flowers covered up uh, really good. Same thing on the saucer. I did gesso, a layer of the Vintage Rose um, acrylic paint, and that's the, it's the metallic. And then I went back after that was dried, and I added a couple of coats of Opal Magic Rose Gold. And that's the Art Alchemy acrylic paint as well, but it's it's the Opal Magic Rose Gold. And you know from demonstrations that a few of the girls have done on uh, some of the mini shows that these paints change colors according to what they are uh, put on top of. So this turned a really pretty gold and I've got kind of a pink cast here because that inside's open but you can kind of see this is a really pretty rose gold color I just I love the color that it turned out a very soft gold with a pink undertone and um, at first you can see on the inside of the cup the the vintage rose is very dark pink um, with the few layers that I did so when you apply that rose gold on top you just get a beautiful gold hue with that undertone of pink and uh, it's making the perfect color for for my daughter's wedding and um, it just it goes so well with these beautiful flowers um, that Sandra Evertson released as well too it's like the perfect 
color on the tip of that leaf and that flower. So um, go ahead and show you how I painted a little bit of this because we do have a few more painted pieces, a couple of um, relics and artifacts here and a little frame. So we're going to go ahead and do our painting first and I'll show you I've worked ahead are the cup and plate glass. Yes, they are. It is just a regular cup and saucer. Um, they are um, glass, ceramic, whatever it is. And they had a um, ceramic painted coating on top of them. That's why I added the gesso so that it would be a, uh, the gesso acted as a primer. So that's the reason for adding the gesso first. Okay, so then I took the resin pieces. And Carrie, I didn't get the package to this to get these numbers. Uh, for these two pieces. This, both of these, I did just a light coat of gesso first, and then this larger heart here, I used the acrylic paint uh, metallic royal red, and what I need to do now is go back over that with a little bit of the um, rose gold. I'm going to shake this up really good, and just going to add just a, just a thin coat of the rose gold and you can kind of see how this kind of changes colors on top of the red. It gives the red um, even a different color than the pink. It's more, it goldens it up but it um, it really makes it shine and it brings out the detail in the um, heart here. You can see these beads you kind of see going to give it a quick dry so you can see it's going to kind of dry kind of clear and it's just going to give you that little bit of a gold I want to kind of work this out here in the center I don't want that to kind of beat up right there so my paintbrush is a little wet so we're going to tuck this in so if you don't get this the perfect um, Okay, that's still the same question. Just watching my phone. Can you see this dries really quickly? I'll let it dry in all those little crevices. But it's just really pulling out the detail in this heart by adding that. You can see it just really, it really shows that detail. So do a quick brush on the back. Uh, this is going to kind of be seen on all sides, so we want to be sure and get a nice coat on the back as well. Then we can give it a quick dry. This is going to be, I guess my flower clustering on this is going to take the most time. Um, the painting does take a few minutes. You need to do um, a nice dry between your coats and you can um, you can use your heat tool to do your drying or you can just let it air dry but just be sure that you let it dry nicely between your coats and um, we're going to do the same thing to this to this um, pink heart here you see how much pinker the if you can tell in this in this light see how much pinker this is and this is only like one coat of the pink I didn't darken it up as much as I did the cup. I wanted a little bit of a contrast in this. I've got a little bit of the gesso kind of peeking up from underneath. You can do a little bit more of the pink color if you like. Just kind of get all of our sides and in all of our crevices. I love this combination with this gold and it's just it's so nice that it matches the wedding so well. I don't want to drop it. It dries really quickly with your heat tool. It's a little hot on my fingers, but I'm going to hold it away a little bit. I'll turn it over and give it just a little bit on the back. Okay, and that's that's all that I did to the um, to the cup as well, except for the layer of gesso, um, just the layer of. Um, probably two layers of the color, the pink color, and then at least two layers of the 
rose gold and that's that's going to be it for those so let's move our paint out of the way Carrie I did not give the numbers on these they are so small let's see the rose gold is nine six three six two zero the vintage pink or the vintage rose is nine six three two zero zero and the royal red is nine six three zero I think that's a eight eight or six eight I've got paint on it at this point um, okay we're gonna put these to the side out of the way I spilled it on myself earlier today so and then we'll just lay these to the side until we're ready to use them oh one more thing I needed to paint sorry about that I knew I was going to forget something we have a little frame here and all I'm going to do this is just a little white resin I frame it just came from my stash it's an Ingville bomb piece um, I just pulled it out of my stash don't have packaging for it anymore so um, all I did is just brush on some of the rose gold really quickly brushed that on all by itself onto the white and it just gives it a nice golden hue I didn't want a lot of color on that so that is all that I did I'll give it a quick dry okay that's all of our painting Add that right about there okay so now what I want to do is show you how I started filling up the cup I used a styrofoam ball you can buy these round balls at your hobby store uh, Walmart even sells them uh, you can get them online I bought a solid round one because I needed it to I needed like a flat surface here and I needed it to fill the cup up and I was finding that the half circles they sell were too shallow I wasn't they weren't raised up enough so I just bought a solid circle and the way I flattened this is I took my large Tim Holtz scissors and I just began to kind of chip away with the scissors these will cut just about anything I just kind of chipped away you could do the same thing with a large file or um, or just small scissors you just have to do it a little bit smaller um, smaller area at a time and then I just kind of shaved it off the blade will actually kind of shave it flat so and I did that really quick it didn't take it didn't take any time at all to do that so that's the inside and you can see it fills the cup and it almost goes about an eighth of an inch quarter of an inch taller than the cups totally fine because I want this cup really oozing with stuff the kind of the prettiness of this is that it's just filled up and kind of overflowing so um, what I'm gonna do is just take some Fabri-Tac and just Add a nice little puddle in the bottom of the cup and do the same thing to the little um, ball itself and then just kind of drop it down in our cup and give it a nice kind of spin get that glue moved around under there and this will be a permanent stay for you um, not at first once it's finished it will so it may kind of move on you while you're working with it but um, as soon as it dries it will be a permanent 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 hold so um, there's that okay so the first thing I did you can see I have lots of lace in here you see the lace uh, we're using lots of lace at the wedding and um, I wanted this to be really lacy so the first thing I started with it's just any kind of a flat lace um, I just had these these bolts of lace like this um, in my stash so I pulled this out and what I'm gonna do is just kind of measure across my cup and cut this in strips if you have a whole piece of lace that totally covers the ball there um, that might be a little easier for you just to kind of cover that because what we want to do is add this lace around this inside this cup here covering up our styrofoam so that just in case we miss a spot we don't have we don't have just styrofoam showing we have that lace underlay there and I wanted to just kind of 
let the glue kind of go down the sides there you can be as messy as you want I'm gonna kind of cut little little uh, slits in it so that it kind of lays down a little bit better and it can be as messy whatever you can have it can poke up and have pleats in it doesn't matter it's all going to be covered uh, but maybe a little area peeking out here or there so let's go ahead and cut some slits in this and I'm cutting these little slits just so that this lays a little bit flatter and like I said it's not really going to be seen it's um, it's there just in case so let's just kind of lay that down we kind of got it down the sides there then we want to lay a few pieces right across the middle just like so so you see we kind of just help that out in case any peeks out I needed to get it down into that side just a little bit right there a little bit more so I'm going to add that down into that side locate my small scissors I'll kind of help that down in there kind of like so it's doing pretty good on this side so that's about what you want right there just about like that so the next thing I'm going to do is I have this gathered lace and again this was just in my stash pretty sure this came from Hobby Lobby possibly even Walmart on a little bolt um, but I just had unwound it I guess in my workings and getting all the wedding stuff done I kind of it kind of left its bolt but anyway it's just a generic a generic little gathered up lace and it is a little gathered but for what I want it to do inside the cup I need it gathered a little bit more so that it's a little bit fuller so what I'm going to do is take some some white thread and this is a heavy weight thread this is an upholstery thread so that it doesn't break and I'm going to do just one ply let me tie myself a little knot here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of measure around the cup about like just kind of measure it around the cup and then fold it down till you've doubled it and then fold it down again until you've tripled it and cut that off so you want to put all of this lace in that cup we're going to do three times the amount so what we're going to do is just start with our needle just an in and out motion in the little selvage area of this of this um y'all didn't know we were sewing tonight did you we are having a sewing lesson we're just going to go in and out of our little lace here just right along that little edge don't poke yourself this is really easy it doesn't matter how wide your stitches are just get them through there I do quite a few um, and you can see let me do this a little slower so you can kind of see what I'm doing just take your needle and push it in and then come back up through in up and I just kind of gather it up on my needle so that it's kind of faster and you will get really fast at this in fact I should have worked this ahead I shouldn't have saved this for now but I'll do it really fast I promise I'll do it really fast and what you're going to have is this stay stitch in here so that once we start putting it in the cup you can pull it out a little if you need to or you can gather a little bit more um, tighter and I'll show you that as we start working but you can see this is sorry guys this is probably going to take me a couple of minutes so I'm just going to work get this done see if I can read the chat oh my chat went away let's see if I can read the chat while I'm doing this um, who all is here I think I said hey to Tiffany oh I think my chat stalled I think I, I don't have and I don't I don't want to take the time to fix it I only have the beginning of the chat I would have to probably refresh the chat and I don't want to take the time so I'm not going to read the chat I'm just going to keep working just keep pulling that through my fingers are a little 
slippery because they have paint on them so just continue to work that through and I'm doing this really sloppy I do not look like um, the seamstress that I know I am doing this because this is this is crafty work you don't have to be neat doesn't have to be professional looking just get those stitches in there no big deal and you see it's just it's just gathered up really tight right now but pretty soon I will be able to work it out and it looks like I've tied myself a little knot hold on let me get it let me get it untangled what have I done okay trying to read the chat I knotted it up okay hold on all right we're worked out okay in and out just in and out it's just I mean you could poke yourself but other than that there should not be any any problem with this and I continue to do that don't do what I'm doing don't get that wound around there don't know how I keep doing that oh my lord y'all this is a sight okay come back threads okie dokie that just had to undo my if you do that do just what I just did just kind of take your let your needle go pull the thread from your needle and just pull it out okay we're almost done let's keep going I'm about to start laughing at this my husband's I think laughing at me in the background I think I hear him The whole point of doing this is to be sure that the cup just looks extra full and um, this lace is not very expensive um, especially when Hobby Lobby runs their sales you can probably get a bolt of this lace for a dollar two dollars if it's not on sale it's just really inexpensive and um, it makes quite a statement it's already gathered but I just need it to be a little more gathered because I want it really full so and you can see I know it's taken me a minute I hope y'all are enjoying your chat because you're just kind of watching me waste time that's why I wanted to do all the painting ahead because sometimes all the painting and watching the paint dry and all that is just so boring and it can be just done on a small scale on the show and explained and you get the gist but always if you have questions if I've hurried through something and you have questions please ask me um, on Facebook or wherever um, my blog you can see my email address and um, or ask on live with Prima's Facebook page anytime you think we hurried through something and you didn't you didn't get it all it's totally okay okay see we're coming to the end okay so what I'm gonna do is just pull my needle out I'm gonna leave all that thread there I want this thread in case I need to loosen that up because you see what's gonna happen is I can pull the thread and I can tighten that up you see how much tighter that gets because we have a knot on this end or I've got all my thread left and I can pull it out and have some some play in the length here so I just want to kind of get this pulled out just a little bit and I still kind of have it yeah I still kind of have it in a little bit of a knot so let's pull this through and that's kind of easy to do when you're doing this so don't get discouraged if it does just kind of pull it out um, just like you're untying a knot or untying a shoelace um, because it is it is kind of flimsy and it's already gathered just a little bit that you will sometimes get a little bit of get a little bit of extra play almost like a knot okay so what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna start off like with my circle right here where I first started 
and I'm going to add some glue just around my outside edges here just let the glue kind of fall down the sides here this is a four inch ball by the way um, this uh, styrofoam ball is a four inch ball uh, you will get a ball I guess according to the size of your cup so that's the size cup this is uh, it actually holds a four inch styrofoam ball so you would have to get your cup and decide then what size ball you would need um, for your cup just going to kind of pull some of this out okay and then I'm just going to take my nonstick scissors and I'm going to just start placing this around the outside edge like so and you want it to kind of heap up out of the cup just kind of place it around get it in there just kind of get it in there like that I'm going to gather it up just a little bit more and then on this side here I'm just going to take what I have left and go back in the opposite direction and just add it in just that just that easy just like that where my handle is here I'm kind of letting it kind of overflow just a little bit right there And you can kind of see I'm just kind of tucking in the edge and we're gonna have so many flowers and pieces in here that this little if your edge is showing a little bit that's totally okay it's gonna be covered up eventually well these are nonstick scissors but I think the glue is like sticking to them anyway so just get that down in there just about like that Okay, now what I'm going to do is just for, oh, let's cut my long thread off. Tuck that in just a little bit more. And that is going to stay just like that. That's exactly what I want it to do right there. Go ahead and move my needle and thread. And then what I'm going to do is add a little Fabri-Tac glue to my saucer. Right to the center. I just want to kind of smear it around. And I'm going to add a little bit to my to my cup like so and I'm going to place my saucer and cup together just right in the middle and let that begin to dry while I'm working on the inside now that I'm finished with the lace I can kind of let that dry okay you kind of see that's just just right in the center of that saucer and that's going to take probably 24 hours to dry solid since it is up under that glass or that ceramic cup so just let that just let that adhere well and um, next thing I'm going to do is take my two hearts and since we're working with styrofoam, I'm going to take my large scissors right in the middle of that styrofoam and I'm just going to kind of push me out a little indention here, kind of across because I want these, and your cup's going to move around just a little bit. I might should have done this before I glued, but anyway, we can reposition it. Do you can see? Kind of like so and you don't have to worry about the lace um, we're gonna have so many flowers and you want to dig it you want to push it in about a half inch and then we're going to take our heart and just kind of hold it up and see maybe a little bit deeper because I want that heart really kind of down in there so that it's 
not going to fall over. So let's just get that dug out. And you can do this before you start this process. Just any time you want. In the process of this cup, you can kind of dig that out. But you can see our hearts are going to be like kind of like so. Get a little bit more on this left side here to make a little more room for our hearts to kind of fit in there and kind of tilt. Kind of see. And what I'm going to do is just take, take this large one and just dig that out. All that I all that I need to down in there. About like that. Okay. Just about like that. And then we're going to take our pink heart and place it right in behind. And a little trick that I did until this was dry, we're going to add some glue. Add some glue down in our little opening there. Just kind of fill that full of glue. Fabri-Tac works wonders um, on just about any surface. So get that down in there. And then we're going to take our pink heart and kind of stand it up behind. And it's not going to be as stable as the red one. So I have a pin here. And for the time being, I'm going to put a pin in behind the pink heart to just hold it in place. And you can leave it there. You can cover that up with the flowers or whatever and leave it. Or you can go back and retrieve that if you don't want to do away with your pen. But you can kind of see that's where we're starting. That's where our cluster begins is around that cross, around these hearts. Don't know why I decided to call them crosses. But anyway, around our, around our hearts. Just about like that. Next, I've got this little frame. And I want to add a little bride and groom. And these are from the Wood Icon Something Blue, number 572884. I think I have a loose one in here. It's already opened. So let's grab at our little bride and groom. Let's put this back in our little baggie. That's what I do. I, I put all my icons together in the little baggy so I can keep up with them and I'm just going to leave it whitewashed just as is add a little glue at the bottom of your bottom of your frame and then just place your bride and groom there so that they're kind of peeking through be sure you get them all in there got a little bit too much glue Get some of that glue off there. We don't need a lot to hold this up. I don't want it really ooze into the front, so just lay that back down. Kind of like so. Okay. And that's going to go in right about there. But I want to take the scissors again and kind of well out a little area that I can kind of sit that down in. And this um, styrofoam, it manipulates really easy. So this is not a problem to kind of smash this out. Just make sure you're not pulling all your outside lace down into your opening there. Just be sure to keep pulling that back out. Okay. We're going to have our cross, right, or our, I keep saying cross, we're going to have our bride and groom. Maybe I should have used one of Sandra's crosses on this because I just keep talking about them. Okay, I'm going to place that right about there. And you can kind of see, we just got three, three little levels there. We got the frame and then the two, the two hearts. And these are my daughter's wedding colors. That's why the red's in there. We're doing like a light pink with a brush of gold and um, pink with the red, sorry, with the red and then white and cream lace. So next I want to grab these really pretty Artics and um, Relics and Artifacts flowers number 942731. These are I think some of my new favorite flowers. They are velvet 
and they are fabulous. This is my favorite. I love this little rose with the little leaves and the little berries or the little maybe the little rose buds. But I love this. So what I did is I first cut off my stem pretty close. You don't want to cut it too close because you want your your leaves and your flowers to kind of stay intact. So what I did is I pulled my two leaves right here kind of back and up and I wanted this one to kind of fall out of the cup. You can kind of see I wanted this leaf to fall down kind of out of the cup. So and I may have gotten that I actually might have gotten that a little bit too close. But if you do you can just add some glue to put it right back in there. What we're going to do is just have this and I want this to fall out right here right next to the um, handle. You can see that's falling out right next to the handle. And you just want this overflowing. I did. I pulled that leaf off but I'm going to just glue it right back in there. You want these to kind of stand up. Um, kind of like so. Now we have another pack of flowers here too that I'm going to kind of alternate. I moved my frame out just a little bit because I am going to tuck a flower in behind there. So this pack of flowers is from Vintage Emporium 588539 I think or is that 58 I think that's 588539. Okay, let's kind of pour these out. I'm going to use a few of these along with these. Also, I'm going to be using pearls. And you can see with the wedding, I'm buying pearls by the thousands here. So this is just a large container that I got at Hobby Lobby. Um, and they're just the solid, uh, like jewelry style pearls. We're going to be using those. We're also going to be using this trim number 990466 this is the grand rosette trim and I've got a couple of pieces well I thought I did I just need a few oh yeah I do right here I have a few loose pieces and I'm going to go ahead and cut off a couple more we're going to use these kind of as little flowers instead of as trim so let's cut off that netting I'm just still not a fan of the netting. So we're going to cut that off. And my daughter's not letting me lose, use tool in, at the wedding, so maybe she takes that after me. I don't, I don't like the tool or the netting on the trim. The other trim we're going to use is number um, 583033 and uh, these little magnolia blooms and I have a few of these already cut apart so let's get these out just going to go ahead and cut me a few pieces and I'm just going to start clustering these all together just to make it really full um, if you don't like to cluster flowers or you're not you're not comfortable clustering just always kind of start with your biggest piece and this is kind of my biggest piece here and then and your biggest piece is in the center and then work your way around okay so what I want to do is I want to take one of these small roses here first and kind of tuck it in behind that frame I still am trying to kind of stabilize this frame I want that tucked in right back there and that's going to help that that uh, frame kind of stand up Next thing I'm going to use is one of these, and these all come wired. I'm not going to use the wires. I'm going to cut them apart. So, just kind of cut those apart. And I'm going to add one of these. Let's see. I'm going to take out first these little yellow centers. I don't like the yellow with these with this um, color that I'm using here and I'm going to replace that center with a pearl. So let's get this flower glued down. 
it's all about the lace and the pearls and these beautiful velvet flowers I'm gonna tuck that in right about there and like I said we just want this full heaping full tons of tons of texture and lots of pieces in there that's what makes this pretty is it's just it's just packed full this is one of our little trim flowers and I'm just going to tuck it I'm just going to lift and tuck it right under that flower so that it's right in front of our frame we don't want it to cover up our bride and groom but we do want it kind of tucked in there kind of turn it around a little bit we're going to take another one of these roses let's take the bigger one think we need uh, which one's the biggest let's use this bigger one and I'm using the lightest colors in this package I want to kind of tuck this right there behind the heart can you see that's right there behind the heart can you see what I've done so far I've got that one back there and you see how full that is we got our lace kind of pouring out and we still got the back to do. You see our back's kind of empty. So I'm going to start back there now and add our largest rose. I'm trying to get the glue off my hands. Sorry about that. The glue is everywhere. So getting it off my hands. Take your largest rose. And we're going to add it over here behind our our um, red heart or red yeah our red heart now I'm, I'm thinking the hearts the wrong word add it right about there next I'm going to use another one of our trim rosettes and this is just layers I the, the florals you just need to to just do layers and tucking in with different textures that's why I'm using the trim and the velvet um, and again I'm going to cut this yellow center out I don't want the yellow my glue is about gone I think I have a new bottle around here somewhere let's tuck this one in right about here get that right down in there and you see that how full that is now it's just and it's just kind of tucking those in just um, you've got the paper flowers mixed with the velvet flowers mixed with that really pretty rosette trim and it's a really pretty uh, kind of a sheer fabric um, and then all the way around you see we've got a little bit of an empty spot right here in the front so what I want to do is take another one of our roses, take the larger one, and add it kind of right there to fill in that, that spot. So you can kind of see it's pretty full now. We've got it pretty heaped up. Okay, lastly we are going to add well not lastly we're gonna add a little ribbon too but let's move all of these pieces all these flowers we're done with these flowers so we'll move these out of the way we'll take these little trim pieces here and just kind of fill in in a few areas just add a little glue behind there's a little bit of a hole right here so I want to just kind of lift that flower up a little bit and add that right there turn this around let's see what else where else we put them turned this around and I added one right about here kind of between these two flowers one right about there turn it on around And yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine and my two don't have to be exactly the same just kind of just kind of get these in there just for a little more texture and and um, I'm just kind of tuck that back there 
I'm going to move it on around. And I want some kind of falling off, falling off my leaves here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one. Let's trim it up. It adds a lot of really good interest if you have these kind of falling off in layers. And these are just so pretty, so dainty. I'm going to add one underneath the leaf, kind of on the cup, and I want it to kind of stick out. You kind of see that. I'm kind of letting it kind of stick out under the leaf. My cup's still not dried. My saucer to my cup is not adhered yet. So we have one underneath. I'm going to trim this one up. And we're going to add this one on top of the leaf so that we have two layers. Just kind of move our flower back out of the way. Kind of stuck to the lace so I'm moving it up and then tuck your okay can you kind of see that <gasps> oh it's not it's not dried yet but can you kind of see we have that one and we have that one and we have the leaf between and then you can kind of bend your leaf down and move your berries let's move our berries to the top how many of these do you need to make for the wedding oh I'm just going to use these two um, every table is going to be different, so we're just going to have these two. Um, lots of different things I'm making. I'm making t tons of candlesticks with um, beautiful fabric flowers, and uh, I'm making pearl balls, topiary balls, and lots of different kinds of things. Um, I'm not a fan of every table looking the same, so it's working for me. Okay, so we are done with that. We have one more little piece of lace here that I'm going to use. And I'm going to use some ribbon. But first, I want to go back and add our pearls into the centers of our flower. So I'm going to just kind of hold this pearl, add a little glue, add a little glue, and right there it goes. And these come in all different sizes, so I'm going to just kind of randomly place these. Um, after I make them little centers on my flowers and on my trim, you can kind of see I'm making that for the little center of that. You see that? And I've got it for the center of that. And this is a large pearl. That's kind of a smaller one. Then let's get a kind of a medium size one. Um, actually, let's take another large one because I want to have a center to this trim as well. And it's just all in the little details. So just be sure and add all these little, these little concentrated details. It just, it's what makes um, something really pretty, just beautiful and over the top. See, I just added that right in the center of that trim. So. Um, that's the same question. Then I'm going to go back and just continue to add these. All the way around into my flowers. we got one right there. Because we definitely want it in the center of our velvet flowers. I didn't quite cut my... I didn't cut my little center out of that one good so I'm gonna add a puddle of glue in the flower itself and add my pearl so that that holds I've also got some flat back pearls here I've got these and these also came from Hobby Lobby Prima sold these years ago we're gonna add these to the centers of our little uh, trim flowers you don't have to just add the dimensional pearls you can also use these these kind of flat back ones just whatever you have you just want lots of interest in there and I'm gonna grab a pearl I'm gonna just hold these with my scissors y'all know I like to hold these with my scissors I'm gonna add some glue and I'm just gonna now just put some pearls randomly in the in the lace I just want I just want pearls kind of all in 
if I can hold on to it, kind of all in my cup. So let's just lift your flowers kind of back out of the way and just tuck them in. You can kind of see, I just tucked that one in right there. Tucked that one right there. Can you see that one just kind of tucked inside the lace? And in person, you can really see these. These really make a, a nice statement. Just takes it a little bit over the top. Add some kind of at the front of our lace here. Okay. I think that's pretty good for that. The next thing I want to show you what I did. I also got these at Hobby Lobby. I'm pearl crazy these days. So I got these strips of pearls. And that's what I did this with. That's how I did the rim of the cup and the rim of the saucer. I'm going to spare you all that on camera. I'm going to do one. I just took my scissors. These are already sticky bags. So I'm just going to cut these apart. I've got these. If you don't own these, you could individually place the pearls. This makes it a little bit easier. Um, you will want to add a little bit of extra glue uh, to the back of this for time purposes I'm not going to do that but you just stick this right around your cup see that right around the rim of your cup just that quick and same thing for your saucer it's just really fast Remove the backing. I've got glue and paint and, oh my word, everything on my hands. Same thing, just place it right around the rim of your saucer. Just like so. See how that is? Just like that. You just want to do that all the way around um, the rim of your saucer and the rim of your cup. Last thing I did was take some ribbon. I just used a really thin pink ribbon. And, um, well, my scissors are v obviously very dull and very sticky. Okay, what I did was I took probably, this is probably about a yard and a half of ribbon. I just kind of folded it in half and tied a bow just kind of like a little shoestring bow tied my bow about that big about that big I'm not I'm not Robbie I don't tie beautiful bows all the time and I don't always care so I did that and then I just kind of, well, I think I just actually just continue to tie them. Do this again. Tie this again. Let's see if this is what I did. Yep. Just kind of make a little double bow there. Pull that down. Pull that tight. Then you want to just take some glue right here on your on your edge where you've got that little extra bit of lace right there just add some glue right there to your lace glue that down just kind of hold that there for a minute hold your finger there for just a minute you can go ahead and cut your cut your tails off and I'll make that a little bit neater in a minute but kind of like so and then I took my leftover piece of um, trim here and I did the same thing. Add a little glue to the inside of your bow and actually let's do this first and then we'll put the bow on top of that like that. We kind of want that tails of both of those. I don't like that. That's going to take a minute to dry, but in the meantime, I'm going to grab a flat back pearl that just came from a stash. Just kind of a larger flat back pearl. Let's pull the sticky off of it. I'm going to use glue 
to get that on there. Okay, let's pull that sticky piece off. It's not quite sticky enough, and I want to be sure that that holds. Okay. Just take your glue. Add a little bit to the back of that pearl. Place that right in the center of that bow. And just allow that to dry for, for just a little while. It'll take it good and dry. And then you can kind of manipulate your bow and your... Um, you can manipulate your bow and your ribbon to get that um, finished. Also, another thing that I did, I just noticed, I took a little piece of sheer fabric and folded it there and added that little sheer there too. Um, so if you want to add that, that's just a, a probably about a two inch piece of sheer folded in half and it's just glued right there with your pearl as well to kind of finish that little section off. But that is it. That is our project. You can see the original and the one tonight and you can go back and finish those pearls and get that in there like you want it. I also did add a little pearl right here to the front of um, that heart. You can do that. As many pearls as you'd like to add, it's totally okay. So that is it. I am I am like two minutes to go till time is up. So we are we are done. I hope y'all enjoyed this and um, see if I can check the chat out for just a minute. Um, no, I think I'm still behind. I don't think I can. So anyway, that's it for tonight, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, I will see you again soon. Y'all have a great night. Bye.